guys and gals, how we doing? It's me, Joe Sayers, back here for the Music Factory Studios. Today, we're going to check out Red Core Linux. Red Core Linux is based on Gen 2 Linux, and on its website and documentation, it says it's an easy-to-install, intermediate user, basically, Linux distribution based on Gen 2 Linux. So let's check out Red Core and who Red Core hardened 2004 is 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 made for. Now, I had some issues with Red Core, but installation was not a problem. Now, like I said, Red Core is based on Gen 2. It is a downstream version of Gen 2 stable and unstable packages. Most of us know of Gen 2 being the grandfather OS of Google's Chrome OS, but Gen 2 can be so much more than that. So with Red Core Linux, we have a full-on desktop Linux distribution that is very powerful but has some issues that I think could be addressed. Gen2 has been a package manager for almost every type of OS out there from there was an Emerge for Mac OS, I think there was a BSD port. So there's some interesting stuff that comes out of the Gen2 world. As you can see, we're using my i3-7100, which has a Radeon RX 550 here on Red Core Linux. Now, Red Core Linux uses a KDE desktop, and I'm not going to cover the KDE desktop. Here, using VDPAU Info, we're going to check out what is supported as far as video codecs and things of that nature. You've got HEVC, H.264. Those are supported in VDPAU, and there are numerous good things about Red Core Linux. As far as being able to install and check out Gen 2, that's great. But for a new user, I'm not so sure this is something that they need to be checking out. But for a more experienced, say, Arch Linux user who's been curious about Gen 2, maybe this is the way to check out Gen 2 without having to go through the complete setup and the build from source Gen 2 we all know. Okay, now Gen 2 and Red Core share the same package manager which is Emerge and Emerge is a very powerful package manager but the one thing I found that annoyed me the most about Gen 2 or not Gen 2 but Red Core Linux excuse me was that sudo was not installed by default okay now for a new to intermediate user who's been using basic Linux distributions this would be super annoying especially since 95% of Linux distributions have sudo out of the box. This is something that used to happen years ago, and now it shouldn't really be an issue. I understand it's a hardened version of Linux or Gen 2 Linux, but Red Core should at least have sudo installed for the user so they don't have to be stuck just using Sisyphus for an update, which I'm going to show you. Because everything is built from source on Gen 2, updating is very slow. Also, a few things that didn't work in the environment were in the desktop environment were the K sysguard. It only really had system load. Any of the extras couldn't really be installed, and they were zero help. Okay, so as you can see, the version of Red Core is using Plasma. 5.19 and it works perfectly fine except for sudo is not available as you can see here is the specs of the machine we're testing it on it is the i3 and the rx 550 i'm running it off of an m.2 ssd it's nvme not sata and everything worked out of the box as far as graphics, FFmpeg was installed by default, which is great. But who is Red Core really for? That's the question. Is it for a new user? No, no it's not. Is it for an intermediate user? Yeah, it depends on how, how, how much knowledge you have as an intermediate user. Do you know how to install sudo by default? Do you know how to fix the config files to get sudo up and running? Okay, now, as you can look down here at the time, the time is 7.02 p.m. when I start an update. 23 minutes later, we're still updating Red Core Linux. And I understand it's building everything from source. 
and it finally finishes at 7.52. It took it one hour, almost one hour, to complete a normal update from a fresh install of Red Core Linux. I understand why that is an issue, but that is Gen 2 in a nutshell. Basically, Gen 2 is an operating system that builds all the packages from source. So it's like using the AUR for everything except it's curated by the Gen 2 and Red Core dist distributors. Now, here is something that I wanted to say. If this was the only operating system I had, it would be like those days when the electricity went out years ago and you had no TV. <laughs> it's okay, and sure, you can get on the internet, but, you know, send me a card when Gen 2 is more favorable toward a new user. Okay, let me know, send me an email, something. But if you want to install Gen 2 and try it out, Redcore is a great way to go. Would I suggest new and intermediate users use this as their daily driver? Absolutely not. And I don't think Gen 2 is really meant for that. In, in, anyway, if you want something that's bleeding edge, grab Arch Linux. And I'm never going to complain about an Arch install again because I see what is out there in the next level up such as Gen 2, and Arch isn't that big a deal, and it's pretty stable compared to Gen 2. And if you want something that's super easy to install with bleeding edge packages, just download Solus and install it. It's the easiest way to go to get bleeding edge. It doesn't have as much in its repository as Arch Linux, but it is a bleeding edge distribution with new kernels and new packages. All right, guys and gals, this was Red Core Linux. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to check out some of our other videos, they should be at the bottom of the screen. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day, y'all.